If you own a small business and you might be looking to sell, you could run into some major issues. Forbes estimates that nine out of 10 businesses listed never actually sell. Why? Because there's only one way to sell. You need to do these four steps first. So if you want to be a part of the 10% of businesses that sell for profits, we've created a free checklist for you so you can sell without those hurdles that normally hold you back. Download the free checklist by visiting www.abundantculture.co forward slash checklist. Welcome back to the Abundant Culture Podcast, where business owners like you come to learn how to grow the valuation of their companies so they can sell in the future. On this show, you'll learn how to sell for top dollar and invest in profitable businesses around the country. Now, here are your hosts, Jazz and Joe. Hi, welcome back to the Abundant Culture Podcast. This week, we wanted to talk to you and continue the conversation about business partners and not as it relates to marriage anymore, but just business partners in general. And more specifically, we'll be talking about how to sell your business when your partner doesn't want to sell because that definitely happens and it happens a lot. Absolutely. And it is a very sticky situation because I do believe that at some point in time, every business owner will need to transition out of their business. But if you have two partners, they might not necessarily need to transition out of the business at the exact same time. So this can cause a lot of friction. We actually watched the movie Jumanji, the second Jumanji, Mm -hmm. I believe. So yeah, in the second Jumanji movie, if you watch the second one, I forgot the the whole name of it, but the second Jumanji movie, there's two old guys on there and they're at each other's throats, like the whole entire, through half of the movie at least. And the reason why is because one partner sold the company and the other partner wanted to keep operating the company. So in Jumanji, and and that's just the movie. Spoiler alert, by the way. If you haven't seen it by now, (laughs) that's that's your fault because it's been (laughs) <laughs> but it just in just the Jumanji movie, you can see a, a situation where one person wanted to sell, the other person didn't, they sold anyway, and it really hindered their friendship for like years, for a very long, a long time. time. We actually spoke to somebody the other day and they said that they were talking to their business colleague for like the first time in like 10 years because after their business kind of went south, they didn't want to really talk to each other anymore. So business is one of those things where it's, like I said, it's a big part of your life. And because it's such a big part of your life, you put so much energy, attention, and effort into it. And you love it so much when there's a partner dispute and the business is in the middle, it can cause a lot of weight to be put on that relationship. And it, you know, ruins a lot of people's relationship basically. So we really wanted to dive deep into that. And we wanted to attack it from the standpoint of what if you want to sell and your partner doesn't because i do think there's some really easy fixes for that or simple fixes that a lot of people don't necessarily explore and i think it probably would have solved the problem in the jamaji movie if they would have tried to do some of these things so i think the first step to really alleviating this problem is to empathize with the other person. Gary Vee talks about all the time, lead with empathy. Empathy is so important, not only in business, but in life in general. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by lead with empathy is figure out why don't they want to sell? Like some people never even ask that question. Why do you not want to sell our business right now? Do you ever want to sell our business? And really, this is not one of those situations where you ask one or two questions and it's like over with. This should really be this is a probably multiple conversations multiple over conversations. a period of time. Yeah, because you know, one day someone can wake up and have a change of mind or a change of heart, and then yeah. the other day they're back to what they said the other day. So you need to, as you grow, you need to make sure that your conversation is growing as well. Yeah, and I think this is one thing that can be avoided a little bit in the beginning to have that conversation in the beginning of the partnership. When are you going to want to sell? When are you going to want to sell? Like it's probably going to change. What if scenarios? Yeah, talk about every single what if scenario you could think about. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody gets hit by a bus, what are we going to do? You need to cover everything because business is crazy. If it can't happen, it probably will happen at yeah. some point in time. And I haven't been in business as long as some people, but I can just tell you from my time and being in business, it is crazy. 
the stuff that can happen. So talk about everything, Mm -hmm. but figure out really in the conversation, you want to figure out what are they getting out of this business that they're concerned they're going to lose if they actually sell it. So that could be cash flow. That could be maybe equity because maybe they think that if they sell right now, they're not going to get top dollar. Maybe they need top dollar because they need to pay off their house for their spouse to be happy or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. There can be tons of different reasons why somebody wants to keep their business. Maybe it's for sentimental reasons. Some people are just, they, they love this thing that they put so much of their energy, time and money into and they just don't want to let it go right now. Or and that's totally they don't understandable. Be bored. That that is that is so key that she said that honestly because boredom is real. I I don't know if you've met anybody who literally just does have they don't have anything to do. They don't have to go to work. They don't have a business. They don't have to volunteer anywhere. They just don't have anything to do. <laughs> but that's they, cool. they're and like retired people. They get yeah, bored. Yeah. And a lot of times they go back to work. Yeah, they do because it's <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> yeah. And and also there's, you know, health goes into that too because mm-hmm. it's been studied that, you know, people deteriorate faster when they're not doing something productive as opposed to how they would kind of age a little bit more slowly if they were doing something more productive. So there could be tons of reasons. They just don't want to be bored. They want cash flow top dollar, whatever the case may be, but you really need to have this conversation. Like I said, multiple times, it's, you know, at least one of those times should be at least an hour long conversation, Mm -hmm. but really try to empathize and see where they're coming from because you figure out that why, and they keep asking why until you get to the bottom and they're like, well, I don't have any more responses for you. It's just, this (laughs) this <laughs> yeah and this is something that's super important not just from a standpoint of if you want to sell and your partner doesn't but also when we're making a deal with somebody to buy their company it's important that we understand why they want to sell because it helps add data and and safety to you because you know there might be something that you can help that person with that is just so above and beyond the dollar amount that they get is not always about money. Actually, at some point in time, it's almost hardly ever about money. Yeah. That's an aspect of it, but that's not the big reason. Because the money is the tool to get them what they actually want. Like exactly. a lot of business owners that we've come across, they want to retire, but it's not just to retire. It's because they want to spend more time with their grandkids. Maybe they're sick and they only, they think they may only have, you know, a couple more years to live. So, yeah. Yeah. So the next thing we wanted to touch on in this process, after you empathize with them, after you get an understanding of what it is that they want out of this business and what they're afraid of losing if they sell it, is the idea of partnership buyout. So if you want to sell, that probably means that you want to get cashed out of the business in some type of way, maybe in some type of deferred payments, maybe in a lump sum. But let's be honest, all you're worried about in the grand scheme of things is making sure that you get a fair price or a fair deal for your part of the business so that you can go and do whatever it is that you need to do. And you're also concerned about, obviously, the business being you know, in the right hands because you just don't want to sell your business to anybody. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. If you have a partner and that partner has worked on this business with you, they've worked just as hard as you, sacrificed just as much as you to make this business successful, they want to keep it and you don't. One thing I would put out on the table is saying, hey, you know, there's this thing over here that I want to do. I feel like this is my next calling in life. The business is doing well what if you could just buy me out and this can be done in a number of different ways so you give can us a couple of different ways yeah so maybe you know your your partner is kind of a baller he just has you know i mean after being in business with somebody you kind of understand somewhat of their financial situation you might not exactly know how much they have in the bank account but you come to understand their financial situation in a more intimate way than a lot of other people would. Yeah. So, you know, there's business partners that we have where we don't know exactly how much money they have, but we have a ballpark estimate of how much liquid capital they actually have because yeah. it's 
necessary to understand that because anything can happen where you might need to put money into the business. If your partner is just, he just has it like that, he's very liquid. He could just go into his bank account and basically buy all of your shares or all of your equity interest in the company. That way you have a fair amount of money and you guys will have to kind of negotiate on what's a fair amount because it's going to be different in every single situation. Maybe, you know, he owns 60%, you own 40%. So he's just buying out your 40%. Or maybe you're in a situation where you don't even need a specific percentage. You just need a certain dollar amount for whatever it is that you're doing next. But in either situation, if he could just buy you out simply, then you have the money that you need to move on and do whatever it, whatever else you're being called to do in life. But not only that, maybe he's not as liquid. There's banking institutions that you could go to that will lend money for a partnership buyout so that you can buy the other partner out. There's also uh, different private equity firms that offer this if your company is big enough to afford that. But also there's alternative ideas such as the partner, if they have, let's say they have rental property or just other par property or even their own personal residence, if they're not concerned about defaulting at all, they can take out a HELOC, buy you out. Now, the reason why somebody might be willing to do that is if the business cash flows really well, then the cash flow from your interest in the business is going to cover the interest payment or the, or the debt on that home equity line of credit that you took out to or, or the home equity line of credit that the partner took out in order to buy your interest in that business. So there's different things that you could do. You could take on debt. The partner could borrow money. There's so many different ways. They can pay you in deferred payments if you're willing to take deferred payments. And there's many ways to structure deferred payments. But there's tons of ways to structure a buyout where you don't have to stay stuck in a business that you don't no longer win and that person can take it over. Or another person can come in and they can replace you as the partner. Absolutely. So that way the remaining partner doesn't have to come up with anything and you kind of were a resource for them. Because the last thing you want is a total fallout. A lot of people become really good friends after being in business together for so, so long. So the last thing that you want to happen is for that friendship to fail. And by fail, I mean, go bad. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that partner replacement is such a good idea because it might take two of you to operate the business, but it doesn't necessarily take you. It just takes two people to operate. So maybe there's a certain amount of expertise that somebody needs to have. Maybe they need a certain background. Maybe they need a certain skill set, another maybe degree that they got from school, whatever the case may be, certain training. You can go out and find somebody who is as good as you, if not better than you at whatever it is that you do in that business. And then bring that person in and say, hey, I've looked at this person. I vetted them. They have all the skills and abilities that they need in order to help you run this business. What if they bought my share out? You keep doing what you're doing. Business as usual. You don't need to come up with any money at all. This person is going to buy me out. And, you know, you continue to run the business that you love. And you guys can continue to still have a relationship. You can have a relationship with the guy that re replaced you. You can have a relationship with your friend that you were running the business with. And it doesn't really have to hinder. And I think that's what's really cool about bringing in that replacement, which was the third thing that we wanted to touch on is bringing somebody else in to basically be you for your partner. Because I think in most situations, in most negotiations, most people can get what they want yeah. in some type of way. It's a way where you can create a win-win-win situation. I don't believe there has to be a win-lose situation for people. I believe that in some way, there's a way to figure out how can I create a win-win-win situation. And in a partner replacement scenario, that is literally a win-win-win situation because your partner wins, they get to keep the business and get to keep their money. They don't need to pay for anything. And then the person who replaced you wins because now they're in a business that was already operating, which is lovely. We're all yeah. about that here at Abundant Culture, you know, just stepping into businesses that already have operations. And then three, 
you win because you obviously capitalized off a transaction, but now you also get to say that you sold your part of the company and you get to now go into whatever calling you feel you're being called to next in your life. So I think those are some really practical things that you can do in a situation where you want to sell the business, but your partner doesn't. You could sell your share of the business and the partner gets to keep their business. So I think you just want to create a situation where it's a win-win. I I don't believe that there's a situation where you absolutely have to sell the whole company just to get out. You can sell your share of it and then that other partner can still be made whole because they get to keep the business. They get to keep the cash flow. They get to come in every day and do what they love to do in the business and I think that can save a lot of relationships from a lot of different downfalls in business because there's something sacred about a business partner. You don't want to screw that up. It's it's almost, I would say some of the closest relationships you'll have in your life outside of your, you know, your relationship with with God, your relationship with God, your immediate family and your spouse, I think right under all of that is your business partner. You probably talk to them more than you talk to your grandma. Yeah. Like when you have a business partner, you literally feel like Martin Lawrence and Will Smith off of the Bad Boys movie. Like (laughs) like y'all could have, y'all could be at each other's throats, but at the end of the day, you guys are so close and so connected that if one of you were in need, you would literally go to the ends of the earth for that other person. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in business, it's like, that's like going to war together because the business world sometimes is war. You have to fight for the vision that you want to bring to the world. And it's not easy. So you want to keep that relationship intact, even if it's time for one of you to move on to something else. And I think a partner replacement or a partnership buyout and leading with empathy are all ways to help do that. Yep. If you don't diversify your investment portfolio, you could end up losing it all. But most business owners don't know how to diversify to mitigate those risks. That's why we created this resource for you. This passive investing guide is a must have if you're planning to invest in businesses. Don't hesitate. If you have more than 25 grand liquid, then you can't afford not to take advantage of this resource. Download the four reasons why in 2021 you need small businesses in your portfolio now by going to www.abundantculture.co forward slash guide. I just want to leave you with this final thing, and that is, although we're talking a lot about empathy and friendship and partnership, we still want you to remember that this is a business transaction. So (laughs) with that being said, do it right. Make sure that you have all the paperwork in place and ask Mm -hmm. those tough questions ahead of time so that it's in the paperwork Mm -hmm. so when the time does come if there is a disagreement hopefully there's not but if there is because you know it happens then you have something to back yourself up with and in one of our operating agreements with our partner like i think if we disagree we have to flip a coin (laughs) and if if it comes to that but it hasn't come to that thankfully we're really appreciative of him and this is a great partnership that we're in so we just hope and pray that you have the same partnership as well so hope this was helpful thank you for listening to the abundant culture podcast with jazz and joe if you enjoyed this episode make sure you subscribe and leave an honest rating and review And remember, we're ready to buy your business. So if you're ready to sell or passively invest in other small businesses, go to AbundantCulture.co for more information. We publish episodes every Friday, so we'll see you next week.